This is the best or nothing Mercedes S-Class. At least that's what their marketing material says. Is it true? We will see. More specifically, it's the 2021 S580 4MATIC with the long wheelbase. In Canada, you can also get an S500 short wheelbase, which is about 17 grand less, which is absolutely fine. In the US, I think both versions, the 500 and the 580, they're both long wheelbases. The difference between the short wheelbase and the long wheelbase is about 18 centimeters, which is the size of a good TV remote control. And the good thing is that all of it goes for rear legroom. So if you plan to be driven in one of these, well, get the long wheelbase, it's so worth it. The S-Class is all about three things, image, luxury, and accommodation. The moment you pull up anywhere with one of these, they all know that the boss is here. Respect is infused by the door handles to whoever opens the door for you. And from that moment and on, they treat you like a king, for sure. The looks might be a little bit understated compared to past models and even current competitors like the BMW 7 Series and Audi A8, but it still looks like money, especially when you stand near it and you realize the size of it. Inside, the best or nothing definitely applies to materials, craftsmanship, fit and finish. The materials are all from the top shelf. Everything feels amazing as you glide your hand over it, but then when you push, Damn, it's back to typical Mercedes fashion. Like really, everything has to squeak. Come on guys, can't you build something solid? Like I understand that that's something you don't regularly do, but one in like a hundred potholes, you hear that little, or like when you hit the thing. So, I mean, it's the design, it's the way they build stuff, how they layer one thing on top of the other. Damn, I'm not sure. I mean, it's kind of minor, okay, fine. You really have to go looking for shit to complain about. But if this was my $200,000 spend, I would be looking. And I'll be honest, it does have a couple more flaws, but we'll get to them in time. The front part of the interior looks very posh. The front seats are like love seats. They cushion you, massage you, warm you up or cool you down. They do everything. The driving position is absolutely fantastic. Visibility towards every direction is really good. You get some really cool features like a traffic light view camera, which helps you see around the A pillar. And also the backup cameras are really helpful. The rear is where the real magic happens, especially behind the passenger. You can press the chaise button and the front seat goes all the way forward, revealing even a footrest for you to totally put your legs up. Unless you're taller than Kareem Abdul-Jabbar, then your legs will be bent, but it doesn't matter. The rear seats are also fully adjustable. They also include a massage and ventilation and of course heating. You can control all that with a tablet in the middle as well. And you can also control other car features like the ambient lights and the curtains. If you bring the gigantic center armrest down, right in the middle, you have a wireless charger, a couple of USB ports, cup holders, and a pen holder. The seat belt buckles are illuminated, and the seat belts in the back are air belts. They inflate in case of an accident, which is pretty cool. This is totally a mafia car, and you know how I know? You can be without a seat belt in the back while moving, and the car does not beep. Also, even if there's a passenger sitting in the front, it will still go into the chaise position, effectively squishing the person to death. But the boss has spoken and the car obeys. And by the way, look at this roof liner. It is so sexy. The rear passengers also have two stage reading lights and they can also turn on and off the whole dome lights, which again means the boss is sitting back here. Also, there's a ski pass through. You can peek in the trunk if you want to make sure that your uh -huh is still breathing or not moving or never mind. The trunk is large, but it's not the largest. It's 535 liters, which is okay, but not mind boggling for the size of the vehicle. Technology is fantastic. You now get the simplified MBUX system that's made to work with a touch screen because now the screen is closer and it's a touch screen. You don't have anything over here anymore to control stuff. It's just steering wheel controls and touch screen. The infotainment system lets you do some pretty cool things like set the ambient light colors or perfectly adjust your lumbar support. Look here, you can have the Pamela Anderson or the Ron Jeremy, your choice. For the first time ever, it also has a built-in dash cam. All you need to do is plug in a USB-C thumb drive and away you go. 
It also has, and I will probably get a lot of heat for this, an Arab wife mode. You know the hey mm-hmm that makes the car respond when you say its name? Well, if you don't want your wife to have a say and she's not allowed to change anything, you can shut her up by pressing that button over there and that's it. Wife says no more hey Mercedes. Under the hood, you get a butter smooth 4 liter V8 twin turbo engine with EQ Boost, which is a mild hybrid system. It makes 496 horsepower and 516 pound feet of torque. It's mated to a 9 speed automatic transmission and pedal to the metal 0 to 100 kilometers an hour. The company says 4.4, we did 4.9. Big freaking deal. It's really funny, but for the first time ever, I've been driving a car in eco mode almost all of the time. And you know why? It's not because I'm cheap on gas. It's because I appreciate the smoothness it brings with it. I mean, it doesn't disable any heating or anything like Teslas and whatever, but it's just so nice. Like, honestly, this car is very powerful and very quick, but it doesn't need to be. You're driving this like a limo, and it's so satisfying to drive it like a limo. I would totally save the money and get the 500. You don't need the 580. By the way, when you turn, you can have the side bolsters to support your body, which is really cool, like AMG vehicles. Back to the engine, it's just so butter smooth. I don't want to upset the vehicle by hammering the accelerator. It makes no sense in an S-Class. It's just the nicest, softest, gentlest ride you'll ever have. I mean, I took my family somewhere. Within 10 minutes, both my kids were sleeping and they're like seven and nine, they're not babies. My wife fell asleep. She was like, she got her mouth open. Like, this is really a vehicle that's like the closest to a Learjet. Like, it's just, it feels like you're on a hoverboard. It's very low, but it barely feels like you're touching the ground. Like, the suspension is so good. This aromatic suspension is fantastic. It absorbs almost everything. The big, long wheelbase just makes sure that body movements are very slow because it dampens the forces. Look at this. These are bumps that in, like, sports cars, I'm like, my breath cuts and I can't speak. Here, it's just like, poof, 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 poof. It really feels like I have like a really a bean bag under my butt. It's like so soft. So to summarize performance, you really don't need the power. It's nice to have it. But in Europe, you can even get one of these in a diesel or a hybrid. Totally makes sense. You don't need the big V8, whatever. Again, nice to have. You don't need it though. In terms of fuel economy, well, because I've been driving it like a limo and have a pretty light foot, and you know what? It's been returning about 13.5 liters per 100 kilometers. That's a really good number for something like this. And even when I started gunning it a little bit just to test it, because you know, it's a test, I need to try everything out. Um, it only climbed to about like 14.5. So you don't really pay a penalty for having a heavier foot. I think if you 13.5, 14 liters per 100, it's a very realistic number to expect. Speaking of driving modes, of course, you have the dynamic select and you can pick between eco, comfort, sport, sport plus and individual, which you can customize to any preset you want. The brakes are pretty strong. They stop the car with confidence, whatever big calipers in the front. The brake pedal, however, even though it, it starts working right away, it has no feel for the first two inches. I've heard that before. Anyway, it's just it needs getting used to. It's a very soft pedal. So, you know, if you come from like a sports car, or whatever, you can end up doing some pretty hard, you know, brakes, but it needs some adjustment. But then, you know, once you figure out that everything appreciates soft, gentle movements, then everything will be fine. Handling, however, is surprisingly good for the size of this vehicle. And shockingly good is the feedback from the steering wheel. The steering wheel has really good weight to it even in eco mode. I mean, I was really surprised. It doesn't have a dead feel at all. And this car is on Pirelli winter rubber. So I'm expecting that once it's on like a harder summer compound, it's gonna feel even better. Turn in is very good. It holds its course with incredible grip, but this is a high speed cruiser, not the one to tackle mountain passes in. Not that it will mind, but due to its size, High speed sweeping turns is what it's better suited to it. Also keep in mind, four wheel steering is an option. It's not fitted on this car, but if you pick it, it's gonna make things even better. 
look at how thick this window is. It's a double glass window, and my God, does it keep things quiet. You know what, this car weighs well over two tons, and I guarantee you that a really big portion of that weight is sound deadening, because it almost feels like it's an electric car. It's so quiet, and that makes it feel a lot more comfortable than what it probably is. I mean, it is really comfortable. Over bumps, you don't feel a thing. I told you before, it's just the rolling quality of this car. Even at highway speeds of like 140 kilometers an hour, like 80 miles an hour, whatever. On the Autobahn, I guarantee you this thing will go really quickly and it will feel like it's just gliding over the road. It is just mind-blowing. I mean, the BMW 7 Series and the Audi A8 are not that good in this specific thing in the quietness and the rolling quality. They're really good, not this good. A really funny story is my brother-in-law, he has an E-Class wagon, a couple of years old. He drove this and then he drove his wagon home and he's like, damn, my car feels like it's a Lada now. <laughs> I'm like, that's too funny. Here's another two complaints I have about this car. First of all, the door. If you make the mistake and you open it all the way and you sit in the car and then you try to close the door, I can't reach the damn thing, it's way too far. Whew. Also, the door handles might go flush when you lock the car, which looks very nice, and they're really strong popping out, so even if the car is frozen, they won't get stuck. But the feel they have, like when you grab them and pull them to open the door, they feel like complete shit. The doors, however, are soft closed, which is also very nice. These two things, together with the push the creek interior, kind of summarizes my complaints with the S-Class, which is otherwise pretty freaking awesome. Overall, the S-Class does have this special aura that buyers of this caliber expect to come with the car, and also their experience with the car. It is very expensive. In Canada, prices for this 580 long wheelbase start at $139,900, and this car as tested is $165,000, and the best part is that you can add another $30,000 to make it even better. The options are just crazy expensive. Nowadays, the BMW 7 Series, the Audi A8, maybe a Cadillac CT6 if you want, they're all really good. They've all upped the game. So it's not that easy to pick the S-Class now over all the competitors. Typically, you would have to go test drive all of them and then pick what you want. But I'm afraid that these kind of cars, I don't think it, they work that way. It's more like, who do you know and what favor do they owe you? And you know, these cars are kind of like parts of other greater deals. So bottom line, I don't think I can ever influence somebody to like buy this over something else. At the end of the day, you're going to buy what you're going to buy. And honestly, no matter what you buy, you're not going to, you know, you're not missing out on anything. It's, they're all fantastic. Overall score is 9 out of 10 for this 2021 Mercedes S-Class. Honestly, it is a dream car and it's a dream to be driven in. So that's pretty much all with the Mercedes S580. If you like this video, please remember to share it with your friends, subscribe to the channel, but most importantly, till next time, be well. Goodbye. Perfect. Perfect.